Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here, and today we've moved into my dining room studios so that I can prepare the table here for next week's Thanksgiving dinner. But while I was at it, I figured I'd do us a, do us a Transformer review of another large character. So this week, we're not talking turkeys, except for maybe one version of him, but we are talking the 1986 Decepticon Assault Base, Trypticon. Trypticon would be released in 1986. He would also be available in 1987. He would be discontinued in 1988, and we would not get a replacement for him. Although some might argue that Scorponok would be his replacement, I tend to doubt that, as Scorponok is more a headmaster leader, not an assault base like Trypticon. Trypticon was released alongside his Autobot counterpart, Metroplex, and is decidedly a little bit cooler than his Autobot counterpart. I mean, just take a look at him. He's a friggin' dinosaur. Although there has been some suggestions that Trypticon was inspired by the Japanese monster Godzilla, or Gojira, if you're more of a fan of the original. And in some ways, the animated series did pay some homage to that, in the fact that Trypticon often was seen rising from the seas. So, slight bit of trivia there. Taking a look at Trypticon, due to some special feature about him, his articulation is pretty limited. This is mainly due to the fact that Trypticon here is motorized. But you do have some play on him. I mean, we can open up the claws by moving the lower claw. Although there's not really anything small enough for him to actually hold with it. The head can rotate to some degree to the sides. You'd have to move his jetpacks to allow it to rotate all the way. But his head can be raised. This is as high as it goes, but it can be made to look downward and have a staring contest at some of the smaller, inferior transformers to him. But in this position, you can also open his mouth. And take a good look in there. You can see he's got a couple of cannons in there. It also has an added bonus. It has this canopy here that you can raise up and pull out his hypno beam weapon, which he can use to hypnotize weak willed transformers and probably to some effect people. You will like and co post causative comments on this channel. You will listen and believe everything this reviewer has to say. Okay, welcome back to the real world, folks. Now, as we said, Trypticon here is motorized. i turn him around here to the back side. He's got two C-cell-sized batteries here that you place in his tail. Right along here, just behind his left leg, is the on and off switch. And in this mode, when you activate it, he will walk. Kind of looks like he's going to topple over, but he does walk pretty good. Before we get too far into Trypticon, let's take a look at his sidekicks that he came with. First up, we have Full Tilt. Full Tilt is a little remote drone that would be used more in the city and battle station modes that Trypticon becomes. As when Trypticon is in his dinosaur mode, Full Tilt is attached to his chest. Full Tilt is basically just your average little robot. 
Press for posability. He can rotate his arms all the way around. And he can bend at the knees so he can possibly do a knee slider. Get real low. And as you can see, he kind of goes with his gun mounted on the side of his arm instead of properly holding it in his fist. Now, Full Tilt here is a fully transformable character. You start by removing his gun. You fold his arms down to the sides and then rotate his knees to bring the section all the way around. Then you can insert the gun back on top. And he becomes some sort of armored car, it looks like. Not really meant to look like anything, but the angles on it do suggest that he is better armored than most. So that he can deflect some shots directed at him. And he does roll pretty good across this. Notice this poster board here we got on the table. That's an important feature for him. Like I said, when he's not being used in the other modes, you basically attach him to these posts right here on Trypticon. And that's where he stands. Now for his other sidekick, one that you would have while Trypticon is in the dinosaur mode, you need five pieces of it, all like here. Start by taking these two tower sections. So you're going to insert the post on this one into the hole in the smaller tower, just like that. And then you'll take these tread units here and attach them to the corresponding holes on the sides. They can only go in one of them, so shouldn't be too hard to figure out. And lastly on this piece, I'll raise it vertically for a moment, and pop this piece out and down. Make sure you insert your AA battery in there. One thing to remind you folks that when you're not play if you're not playing with these toys, take the batteries out so you don't corrupt them or corrode them. Insert this down onto the large tower and bring the turret on down. And there you have Brunt. Brunt is basically a tank of some sort. Now, while it's a bit of a downside that the turret here cannot rotate, it does elevate pretty well. It does ratchet. That's as high up as it can go, so it can kind of shoot up behind him. Listen to that ratcheting and the squeaking. <laughs> and as an added feature, there's a little black switch here on the back. You just move that into position. And the gun barrel lights up to indicate that he is firing. <laughs> and thanks to the wheels on the bottom of the tower, not in the treads, surprisingly, he does roll relatively well. Squeaks like a tortured mouse or something, but he does roll. And that, of course, gives you Brunt. Now, folks, we're going to get to the real fun part. We're going to transform Trypticon here. First thing that you'll do is you'll take Brunt apart. As you saw me assemble him earlier, just follow the directions in reverse. And now for Trypticon himself, we got to remove Full Tilt. Get him out of the way. And then we rotate up his jetpacks and pull out the tab, pull out these purple sections to extend them a little bit. No, nope, we don't do that yet. Sorry, my bad. We don't do that right now. But now that that's up, 
You turn him to the side for alongside his hips, and you got these little black levers on the side. You just push them down, and then pop the sides of his legs down. You'll do that on both sides. Just exactly like that. And now, you get to have him lay down, and in the process as well, separate the sides of his body out. Just exactly like that, and just lay him out flat. And then, we're going to take the tank tread sections that we had earlier from Brunt, and those get attached alongside these black wheels here along the side. This in interior section in here is the motor that drives Trypticon. So these things are what is usually is what is turning his moving his legs. But you connect these on here and we'll have a new motor feature to take advantage of in a moment. Now that you've got those attached, I'm going to turn him to the side here because we're going to rotate his head all the way around so that he's facing like that. And we're going to grab these purple platforms and fold them outward. As you can see there on the side, on this one side here, you fold them out and it says helipad, or at least it will if it has the stickers on them. And then now comes the real fun part. You reach right in here into this groove, and you're going to pull out the main ramp. Yes, it's, on, it's in there real, real tight, folks. Hold on a second, I'm going to need a little help on this. Alright, thanks to the help of a little bit of a tool, I'm able to pop that loose, and you just fold it down all the way out and in front. Knock the tread off over there on that side. For some reason the ramp doesn't want to lay flat, but... Whatever. Well, maybe the battery covers. Yeah, that's what it is. Battery covers not in all the way. That's better. That's the thing you gotta watch for with the battery cover. Make sure it's in all the way. Benefits of live television. And then fold the ramp down flat. We can see it. It's down flat. Leaving him as a side so he doesn't blind you. Alright, getting back to him. Now we rotate jetpacks straight up to be towers of some sort. And you will take these two tower segments here that was used to build the body of Brunt. You'll hold them like this and insert their posts in the little holes on the sides up here just beyond the helipads just exactly like that and next I'm going to take the two radar units that you get and you will attach them to the orange holes that are on the tank tread units Like that. And this platform that you've been seeing coming loose, we're going to pull that all the way up until it clicks. And then for a final touch, you take the turret and mount it topside. And then, here you are, folks. Attach the camera here so you can get a real good look at it here. Trypticon 
in city mode. He's a pretty good sized city here, folks. And comes complete with a whole slew of action features. So we'll put that tank tread back up here. Up here where the tower portion was, it's a small launch ramp, which was a good bonus for full tilt here. You just put him up on the purple ramp, on the purple section, right there at the end. There's a small lever on the back. You just push it down, and he rolls off. It almost went off the table. And we put him back here to face you. And as an added bonus, as I had said, since the motor is in this compartment down here, the tank treads have wheel grunt sides in them, so that when you turn him on, turn Trypticon on by pushing the power switch here on the side, his little scanners rotate. Now, for now, I'm guessing a fair amount of you are saying, Hey, Sparkster, that's enough fun for me right there. But, oh, no, we're not done yet. No, sir. We are not done at all. I'm going to slide Trypticon further to the back. Get some more stuff out of the way here. These large circles here at the ends of, at the ends of Trypticon, if you look underneath them, there's a set of holes that go with them. You take these bonus connectors that you've got and just connect them in. They'll fit in kind of loosely, so make sure you got a nice flat surface. You want to leave this square section here sticking out on them as best as you can do it. Trypticon's not making this easy with having to rotate him. So we'll go around here to the other side and do that one. I'll show you that getting. Show you that it's on here in a second. Get that in there. There we go. Detach the camera. And you can see there's one right there. And there's one right there. Pardon the shadows. But those two end connectors can be used to connect onslaught. And Motor Master. So right over here, we've got Onslaught in his base mode. You just rotate his head so that the face is facing upward. Of course, you're not going to have the cannon on it. And then just rest his head gently into that hole that would be sticking out. And move the tripod over here to the other one. And you will have Motor Master in his ramp mode. You have to fold back this top section here and have Motor Master do a splits. And then this little purple bar here rests inside the hole on this one. And Voila, folks, you now have two extra areas to place some Transformers. Now, let's get him outfitted. Now, bear with me, folks, I forgot to put those two purple ramps in there on the sides, but take a look at this. With him fully loaded up with Stunticons and Combaticons, you have got yourself quite an amazing little city going on here. A lot of activity, a lot of open room for your imagination. Remount the camera here. And yes, for any of you who might be wondering, the launch ramp can be worked with these other toys. I'll let you see it here in this mode. We'll shoot full tilt down here. He made it to the dining room floor. 
We'll put drag strip in there. We'll first take his gun out, then stick drag strip in there, and contact. Not quite as good, but you get the idea. All right, now that he's deserted of any and all Transformers, we're going to put him into his final mode. To do that, we need to remove some of the pieces. For starters, we need to remove the connectors if you chose to use the if you chose to use these to connect Onslaught and Motormaster. You gotta get those out of the way. We need to remove the purple ramps that are on the sides. The two purple towers that are on the sides. And you got to remove the scanners, but keep the tank turrets, in, uh, keep the tank treads in there. You just need to remove the scanners. And then next, you're gonna fold in the helipads, and you fold up the ramp at the front, and close that in snug. And while you're at it, rotate out these little cannons here. Next, you're going to take his legs on the sides, fold them up, snap them back into place. Just like that. So you can bring down his toe. We'll bring down the purple parts on the ends here. You want to fold them down flat and flush. You lower this section, this piece, back down. It takes a little bit of wiggling. You know, remove the turret. Good hand smack. Put the turret back on. Lower it. Pull these purple pieces out now. And lower them to be more guns. Now for some additional weaponry, you'll have a couple of these empty stands with a good deep slot in the front. You just slide in one of the included weapons into it and mount them into the treads. Don't get ahead of me here, folks. You know what's coming. Do the same thing with this one here looks like a couple of missiles instead. Just mount that in there. And there you have it. This is Trypticon at his most powerful, the battle station mode. And while they say that it does roll, it kind of slides more. Slides pretty good. But of course, he's also sliding on a piece of poster board. I would not dare try this on the bare table. And they say this is him at his most powerful since he has access to all of his weaponry. And of course, like you saw earlier, the scanners on the city could rotate from here. The same thing applies to those weapons. And of course, for added fun, Turn the light on on the turret, and there we go. Full-scale assault here, folks. Let's take a look now at Trypticon's loose parts, and as you can see here, by the way, we're panning the camera around, Trypticon, as a base character, does have quite a few parts available to him. I'm going to start with possibly the most commonly missing of his loose parts, his battery cover. Since this thing is totally removable from the main dinosaur, this comes completely off a of Trypticon, you'd be amazed at how quickly it gets lost on loose samples. On the inside it's just hollow, which is you would expect it to be to hold a pair of C cell batteries. 
Next up, of course, is the turret. Or as they also call it, a laser cannon. This is its battery cover. And you see it's attached by mainly thin plastic. So I imagine this could be broken off pretty easily. So you'll want to check that. And of course, more bonus points to you if you can find one that still functions. The only downside is that it doesn't rotate on its base, but it does elevate. It has a three position ratchet. You can still hear that sound. Beautiful sound. And of course, you have two ramps. Now, while these ramps do look similar, they are different. As you can see, they are kind of mirrored. Only on the one side does each of them have this little protrusion on it. Just barely you can make out there's an R and an L on, their fr on the front sides here. It's very tiny, but when you turn them around on the back side, etched underneath them up near the top, there's an L2 and R2. So while the ramps do look the same, they are different, and they will only go in one slot on Trypticon. They are specially made to only fit in one spot. So, always check that when you buy loose Trypticons. This here is the small tower. Just a hunk of plastic. There's nothing really fancy about it, but it does have the squeaky wheels that Brunt has. And then, of course, to go with it, you have this large tower. Large as in wider tower. It also has some squeaky wheels underneath it too. You got full tilt. Either in car mode or we just hold that out in robot mode. Either way, all he is, he's just a bit of plastic with wheel with big wheels. And a few stickers if you're lucky. This one didn't originally have some. All these stickers are brand new on him. Unless you also have two connectors. And as you can see, they look the same, but they are different. They basically are they're just the opposites with each other. You'll need those. If you want to connect Onslaught and Motormaster to him, that's the back sides of them. You have these two tank tread sections. As you can see, they are mirror images of one another. Those are the posts that connect into everything, and as you can see, there's the little tiny wheel that the motors drive to turn whatever's attached to these holes. Now we're getting some of the funkier parts here. Because you have two blaster stands, and as you can see, the two stands are radically different from one another. I mean, this one here, it's got two protrusions pointing out near the top. This one just has like one big dot in it. Their only purpose is just to hold the guns. They basically connect to these two guns. So basically, you got your single barreled laser and what they call your double barreled laser. Now, on your single barreled laser, something you need to pay attention to, folks, is this section right in here. This is very thin plastic and it does break relatively easily. The first bundle of parts I bought for Trypticon, 
this section was broken off and gone, so I had to replace it so that I could complete him and get him to hold the gun right. The double-barreled one, as you can see, since it's fused together not only in the center, but at the back, you don't have that problem. They can call it a double-barreled laser all they want, but I still think they that it looks like a pair of missiles, like it's a pair of missile launchers, but you know, let your imagination run wild with it. And of course, you also have two different scanners here. You got this one, which is kind of like your standard radar. It's got the one big dish on it and not much else. Then you got this one here that's got two dishes on it. The thing you'll have to watch for is this thin stalk here. As it is very thin, it does angle and fold. And it does warp, because you can kind of see there is some, some signs of stress wear right down here at the connection. I don't know if it can be seen that well on the camera, but that's something for you all to keep an eye on. That may be broken on some of the loose samples. And lastly, probably the one of the hardest pieces to find on Trypticon is this little disruptor gun. This is Full Tilt's gun. This is the top side of it. and Rotate it around here. The bottom doesn't really have much. Just the post that connects it to Full Tilt. And that's all of Trypticon's parts. Quite a few to find, folks. Try to get him complete if you can. Now, while Trypticon and Brunt just stand back there posing enjoying their screen time let's take a look at Trypticon's instructions as you can imagine these are pretty big yeah, big long spread here to cover all of the loose pieces and such of course they don't mention the battery cover so bear that in mind now they start showing you how to set him up how to load the batteries in him and get him fully set up and ready to roll and walk and then of course how to assemble Brunt and now we start turning him into the city mode around here and now we'll start on the back side including the showing off of the bonus feature and now I'll show you to start the battle station And how to transform full tilt into a robot. And now we get to the stickers and Trypticon came with a lot. I was able to update most of the stickers on my Trypticon thanks to getting a semi-complete sticker sheet. Always a plus. Now here on the final page we get the robot points to remind you to clip and save because Trypticon did come with a promotional offer. Proof of authenticity, how to read the rub sign. And as you can see, the rub sign is up there just behind Trypticon's left eye. And how to read the tech specs. Pretty much standard flair for many of these Transformer toys at that time. Now this would be the part where we would go to the tech specs but we're going to do something even more special here for you folks. Let's get Brunt and 
Trypticon out of the way here for this, because I got a real treat here for you folks. I want to show off something to you real quick first. This is the styrofoam packing that Trypticon came with in his box. As you take a look at this massive gap in the middle, that is where Trypticon was placed. They had him spread out and all the side panels opened and spread out. That was the only way to get him to fit in there. Up there, that's where full tilt would go. You'd have the laser turret in there. Most of the rest of the parts for Brunt would be down there, and right there would be where the other one went. And then that large cubby here in the upper right corner, that would be where all the rest of the parts would be, and the assorted paperwork that Trypticon came with. Which, like we said, that would have consisted of instructions. It also came with this mail away. On how you could order yourself your own stars base and a few transformers that were available at the time. This was one of them that came with the Decipher the Decepticon posters. I'll open it up and treat you guys to this. I have the whole poster. We'll show you the whole poster in one of our future videos. But you can take a look at this and see this is the top left portion of the poster. It's a nice little bonus that this one get, that this came with. And lastly, the 1986 checklist. Open that up and let y'all have a real good look at the 86 wish list. You know, coming hot off the heels of the animated Transformers movie. We had a lot of great Transformers that just came out. Even better, this checklist isn't marked at all. This, this, this is a beautiful thing here. You can see some that were still available. Getting ready to be taken off the market. And of course, right here is the big boy himself, Trypticon. The combiners, the cassettes, and the Decepticon planes. Now, as you can imagine, by getting all this, something else had to have come with it. And you're right. The box. Now the box here isn't exactly in the best of shape, but hey, I got the inner packaging and all that paperwork, even a spare set of the instructions were included with this. So what a deal. As you can see, this is one of them that was one of the later issues in 86, as it had that little yellow spot down there at the bottom that advertised for the mini poster that I showed you. You can see him turning into the battle station there and advertising that he walked. So that was a bit that was a big deal for a toy at that time that he could do so much. We saw the sides of him there. Fold that in so we can close the box up. And get this to face the right way here. You can see this basically what the top or the bottom of the box would look like. Including a nice menacing close-up of Trypticon. And we'll pull it up here and you can see the back of the box. Again, not in much better shape than the front, but... Still, you get a nice, good view of the 1986 mural that basically highlighted Metroplex and Trypticon. 
just a bit inconsistent since some of the guys appear numerous times. Like, here's both forms of razor claw for some reason. We got two versions of Hot Rod, although I can imagine one might be Rodimus, but way back here, maybe a little hard to see on the camera, there's a third Hot Rod. This looks more like it could be Rodimus. It's got the bigger gun. So how can he be in three different places at the same time? A little inconsistent, folks, but all in good fun. And of course, over here at the side, you got transforming him. Raise this up so you can get a look at it. A little basic way of transforming him. The simple way. And of course, along here at the bottom, right over here, we had the contest rules for the poster. And over here, we have the robot points. Crypticon was worth a whopping seven points. So now we'll take a look at Tripticon and his stats. If we can get the glare from the lights to get out of the way here. Let's lower the boon here on the tripod. That's better. You can see it's all done in purple to show he's a Decepticon. It has the picture of him that's the same as the one on the front of the box. It gives his name as Trypticon and lists his function as Assault Base. His motto is, Total Victory Requires Total Destruction. Doesn't stop blasting until he's hip deep in smoking rubble. Completely without mercy. The most lethal fighting machine devised by the Decepticons. In dinosaur mode, jumps 20 miles with rocket backpack. Shoots heat-seeking plasma bombs from mouth and mind-controlling hypno-beam from optical sensor. As City has landing and repair bays, communication center, and rotating scanners. In mobile battle station mode, has laser cannon, rotating blasters, destructo beams, and dual proton launchers. Quite colorful. Of course, not as colorful here at the bottom of the picture you can see the prototype of full tilt apparently had him with a pink body i think he looks better with the purple getting back over here to trypticon we'll lay the decoder here over his tech specs and we'll take a look at how he is it lists his strength as 10 his intelligence is 7 his speed is 8 his endurance is 10 his rank is 9, his courage and firepower are 10, and his skill is 8. So, Trypticon is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Now we get down to, what do I think of him? I like Trypticon. Trypticon is probably one of the most fun of the playset characters that was done in the entire line. He was motorized like Omega Supreme, but was able to do a bit more than what Omega could do. And he does seem to have a little bit better on the battery functionality than what Omega Supreme did. As a toy, I mean, yes, granted, the, mo the articulation is limited, but that is the price you pay for a motorized toy. Trypticon's popularity on the secondary market rivals with Scorponok, actually, and their values constantly fluctuate. The two of them seem to have some sort of rivalry in the collector's market, mainly due to the amount of parts that they have, but Trypticon also has the slight edge in the fact that he is motorized where Scorponok isn't. So, in some cases... That's usually the, the driving force behind Trypticon's value is whether or not his motorized and battery-powered functions still operate. In the cartoon series, Trypticon was portrayed as a bumbling idiot to tone down the violent-sounding means that his tech spec had, and that goes along the lines with the turkey reference that I gave to him earlier. 
as in the cartoon, he was voiced by comedian Brad Garrett, of all people. Let that sink in for a moment, folks. Now, while the tech specs do describe him as a totally ruthless and despicable character, the More Than Meets the Eye guidebooks paints a different side to Trypticon, stating that this destructiveness that he has comes from the fact that he despises all living things, including, unfortunately, himself. Trypticon hates himself, and puts on this image in the hopes of keeping the other Decepticons away from him, as he also knows that with his power and physical strength, Trypticon could be bound to lead the Decepticons at some point in the future, a thought that he does not appreciate, because he also doesn't like war, and finds the, the conflict totally pointless. A shared trait that all five of the base-type Transformers seem to share. So it seems ironic that the most powerful of them seem to be the most pacifist in nature. But whatever way you depict Trypticon in your own imagination, Trypticon is still one of the better toys available in the line. He's got a fair amount of pieces. Both of his alternate modes look very good. The ability for him to attach both Onslaught and Motormaster to him just expands the play value even more. Trypticon is a must-have. He's a top-tier toy all the way. And that concludes my review of the Generation 1 Decepticon Assault Base Trypticon. If you like the video, please thumbs up it here on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Post a comment, share your thoughts, help support this channel, and keep the Transformer reviews coming. This is Sparkster1701. I'm telling you all to have a happy Thanksgiving next week. Don't pig out on too much turkeys. And I'll see you next time. Catch you all later.